Hello and welcome to Kedrick Farms. We're back with another episode of Mercer County and it's finally midsummer. Our wheat is ready to harvest, except it's been raining all day. So hopefully we can work out the issues here with our weather and get into the field soon. Uh, I think the crops are going to be wet and need a chance to dry out here as well. And so we were really hoping to get things harvested so that we could get our short season soybeans put back in. We've only got this short uh, window here to do that. And so if we can't get into the field today, we're definitely going to need to get into the field tomorrow. And so we're going to move the time forward a bit here. Hopefully it stops raining here and we can get out into the field if we check our weather calendar here. It looks like it's going to stop raining, but... Tomorrow is not really looking that much better. A little bit of drying potential here uh, as we get into the 9 o'clock hour. But we're going to get some more rain towards the end of the day on Saturday. So ideally the fields are going to dry out here in the middle of the day tomorrow, which really represents a couple of weeks in season's time. And we'll be able to get out here into the field. We're into the next morning here. And it looks like we did get some decent winds here overnight. Everything dried out. It stopped raining shortly after I uh, cut out of the video there earlier. And everything looks good to go. It's a shiny 6 a.m. here. Sunrise is looking good. I guess it's a little bit more than sunrise. Wow, it's sun is really high in the sky for 6 in the morning. Uh, either way, we're going to uh, get our combine and everything out here into the field. We've got it all set up for wheat here, and so we should be able to dive in here and get going on this wheat. I'm excited to see how much we get from a yield perspective. Uh, huh, we forgot to fuel up the combine here. We are using the increased fuel consumption mod on this save, and so we do tend to burn through our fuel a little bit quicker than we would normally, which is... Uh, Pretty good in my opinion. I like that uh, I have to actually worry about fuel for a change. Apparently we also have to worry about the money in our bank account. We do have a sizable loan out right now from picking up our uh, custom spraying setup. And so while we refuel this, we can take a quick look at the contract map. We do have a couple of fertilizing uh, contracts here available. So we might go ahead and grab those and go take the sprayer out here and let one of our hired hands do some of the spraying fields 30 and 31 so if i just look at the map here they're not the most usual shaped fields but we could definitely use the money so we're going to pick up the contracts here on fields 30 and 31 and we'll uh we'll go get that guy out there and working on that here shortly First though, I do want to get this wheat going because we do also need to uh, seed our soybeans in here before the end of midsummer. And so I want to make sure that we're keeping everything moving along here. And obviously harvesting the wheat is the most important job of the day today. So let's go ahead and take this headland pass off. Uh, I'm going to make sure we're not doing a straw swap here because that is not something that we have the equipment to handle. And so we're going to dive right into our headlands, uh, take a couple of headland passes off, and then we should be able to let a worker uh, start going on the long rows here after we get the field opened up. I'm not sure what a good yield for wheat is. I do not harvest wheat on a regular basis. One of the things that I keep meaning to do is put together a chart of a real world averages for different areas uh, to go along with uh, the farm sim average and uh, I guess best case scenario for different crop types. However, it looks like we're doing about 83 bushels an acre here, which feels like it's probably pretty good. I want to be careful that we're not driving over our soybeans here. Those are going to be the money maker for us this year, I think. And so if we just pop up the precision farming map here, uh, yield is looking pretty good. It looks like it's comparable to the previous year. Uh, we didn't grow wheat in this field previously, but uh, it means from a percentage perspective, we're doing pretty good here. 
Um, so that means we probably got all of our fertilizer and lime all set up correctly in this field. The one nice thing with harvesting uh, crops like this is compared to something like corn, uh, it's a little bit uh, less hectic, I'll say. Uh, we're able to uh, actually cover a few acres here before we have to unload our combine, which is going to allow us to completely open up this field before we need to dump the wheat out. Now, it looks like we've got a couple of spots here in this field that had the crops died out. Not sure what happened there. Maybe we got a little bit too much water in a few spots of the field here. And so that's what these uh, grayed out, kind of withered dead areas represent. Luckily, it's only a couple of spots. There's not a bunch of them, although there's a couple of big areas. It's kind of hard to see, but in the distance there, uh, on the other end of the field, it looks like there's a couple of big spots that the crops died out. And given that this is kind of a smaller field, that's a little bit unfortunate from a yield perspective. But on the flip side, our corn is looking very good there. We've only got one spot in that field that looks like it uh, took some damage, so I'm very happy with how the rest of our crops are looking. We should probably at some point go out and scout the rest of our fields. I haven't taken a look at the two fields on the other side of the map in a little while, so we should likely head over there and just see how they're doing. Make sure that all of our weedy weeds and everything else are under control on those fields. But like I said, we're getting ahead of ourselves. We gotta finish getting this field opened up first. I think what we'll do is follow this around before we try and pick up the uh, shorter back and forth row there on the headland, just to give us a little bit of room here. Uh, that barn is mighty close to the edge of the field here on that side. And so it'll be easier if we can just cut this whole section out so that the combine doesn't end up there trying to turn around with the worker. Just taking a quick look over at this bean field, it looks like we've got a fair amount of damage out there as well in the middle of the field. Several different spots. So that is also a bit unfortunate. It seems like we took a lot of damage this year. I wonder if it's because we got so much rain uh, compared to the previous years. We've had uh, rain for several days here at different points and I definitely didn't notice all of these damaged sections uh, in the previous growth state. I think Seasons updates each growth state uh, to check based on uh, what kind of moisture levels and temperatures and different things that you've had, whether or not to apply damage uh, when it's growing the crops to the next stage. And so while I do appreciate the realism, I also uh, get a little bit frustrated because we've got quite a few dead spots in our bean field over there and our beans are supposed to be the money-making crop for us this year. We've got beans in our biggest fields and so I'm really curious to see what that other big bean field looks like on the other side of the map here. So I think what we're gonna do is set the worker up now that we've taken the headlands off here on the long rows. It's still early enough that he wants to run the lights, which is fine by me. And we're gonna run back up to the farm here and grab the truck and go scout this other field real quick. All right, let's, uh, let's take this out there. I'm really curious. First, we're gonna head on over and actually take a look at this bean field and see what level of damage there really is out here. I know I saw some big spots at a distance, but I kinda wanna take a closer look. It looks like this cornfield's in pretty good state though, which is good. Uh, but we're gonna come back here around the grass part here into the uh, corner of this field and see if we can take a look at some of the other sections here. I don't wanna drive the truck out there and damage the beans anymore, but I do see a pretty big spot out here that I wanna walk out and take a look at. Yeah, so it looks like we've got a couple of different spots here. Uh, that suffered. This looks like a spot that didn't actually germinate because it has the seeded texture. And this spot actually looks like it didn't even get planted. So I'm not sure what happened out in this part of the field, but we're definitely missing some beans. If we bring up the in-game map here, you can see the difference between germination failed. These dark blue areas are actually areas where the beans failed to germinate. This might be because I think we were putting our beans in at a slightly lower temperature than recommended, I'm not sure. 
Uh, but seeing a few different sections, it looks like over here in our cornfield we might have a few more as well, uh, is mildly concerning. We definitely lost out on a few decent sized chunks in this field already. So with the scouting done, we're gonna drive back up to the farm and get the grain cart out here. It looks like our combine is starting to get full. And so we'll empty him out here real quick before we head over and scout the other field out. We've got the grain cart all hooked up and ready to go here. Uh, I definitely like this Demco 650. I was in the search of something, you know, in that smaller size. It works really well. It unloads at a reasonable speed. And so I've really been liking this grain cart. I think it's a perfect fit for our farm. And let's be honest, it just looks really cool too. It's a well done mod. Now I'm really hoping that our combine friend is going to make it here to the end of this field. Although looking at how full that hopper is, I'm thinking we're not going to make it. Uh, I think he's going to have to stop here momentarily and we'll have to dump into the grain cart here. We probably should have unloaded him first before we headed out to scout that field. I was hoping he could make the full round before we needed to get this wheat out of the hopper. He's going to get so close to the end of the field here just to uh, make sure I'm frustrated that we didn't quite make it. We're not going to get there, are we? We've got 30 feet left in this field and we're full up. That's okay. We'll go ahead and back this guy up here and see if we can put this right into the grain cart. We're not quite paying attention to where our header is. That was almost an accident. We don't need to be spending the day in the shop fixing our combine. We've got a lot of work to get done today. All right, we are all emptied out, so let's get this worker set back up here. Uh, I'm not going to worry about getting the truck out just yet. We're going to be able to store quite a bit of the wheat in the grain cart here. Uh, we might even be able to finish this field between the combine and the grain cart, to be honest. But we'll definitely need to get the truck out at some point just to get the grain into our bins, as this grain cart does not have the capability to dump straight out into our pits. And our pits are enclosed, so we're going to have to sort that out here before we're done today. However, I think that the workers are going to be able to help tackle this field for us and we want to get out here and check out the uh, check out the other fields and get our workers going on some spraying for us as well. So I'm going to just turn this grain cart around so he's all set up and ready to go uh, since we'll try and unload on the go on the combine's next pass here and we're going to head out and check those fields out. I am always love just seeing equipment out working in the fields. One of the things that I think I've mentioned in the past is I would love to see in Farm Sim 22 uh, NPC equipment show up in the fields and start working those fields when uh, the NPCs are doing something with the field. Rather than just have it flip from one state to another magically uh, on the hour, I'd rather see equipment show up in a field and start working on it. That would be really cool. I have no idea how they would pull that off, but it's something that uh, I loved about some of our multiplayer servers and stuff, is you just see other players out in the field working, and so even if you're not directly interacting with them, uh, it feels much more alive. I love seeing equipment moving around in the fields. So we're going to head down here and check out our cornfield first. I'm expecting, actually this isn't a cornfield, I think this is our other bean field, come to think of it. And so we're gonna check out this bean field real quick. Hopefully this one's doing better than our other bean field is, uh, because we definitely need that uh, money to come in here after harvest. And so just taking kind of a quick look here as we drive along the edge of this field, for the most part it looks pretty good. We've got a couple of small spots out here towards the back side of this field, but for the most part it looks good. Uh, this looks like the beans failed to germinate in a couple of spots, but overall, not a big deal. And then heading down here to our last field, 
we should have some corn growing, I believe, in this field. We split things up pretty good this year. And so I think we've got two fields of corn, two fields of beans, and then we're going to have some short season soybeans here shortly. Uh, we've got a little spot right there on the end that looks like we have some damage. Not a big deal. And if we just kind of pull over here to the edge of the field, I'm seeing a couple of spots out here. But overall, I'd say this corn looks pretty good. There's just one or two spots here where we've got a few sections where it looks like our corn has died out. But all in all, I think we're doing pretty good here in this field. So without further ado, let's get back up to the farm. We've got to check on the wheat harvester, and then we're going to jump into getting the sprayer moving. It looks like our combine is heading back down with his auger on the correct side for unloading. So let's jump right in to the grain cart here and see if we can catch up with him before he gets to the end row. Would love to get him unloaded on the go here. And actually, I'm looking at this grain cart and a full hopper from that combine filled us up exactly 50%. And so we'll actually top off the grain cart here on this pass, which is uh, actually a pretty good yield for this little field. I guess the combine isn't quite full. I don't think he'd probably have gotten full by the end row here, if I'm being honest. But uh, that's okay. We'll just unload what he's got here and we can uh, keep working on this. I've just realized as well we're into the middle of summer we need to sell the beans that we planted last year. Uh, we've got a few beans in the bins and usually day three four of summer is the high point for selling soybeans here with seasons at least in the geo that we're in and so I want to make sure that we're getting paid for the beans uh, and hopefully paying down a little bit of our outstanding loans here. And so before we get the semi all set up here for wheat, I think we might actually load out a truck of beans and see if we can find somewhere to sell those, which means we've got to get our uh, semi disconnected from the spray rig so that we can haul out some beans. So we've just got too many jobs going on here. And we've only got one truck to do it all with. So we're going to drop this spray rig off here real quick. And run over here and do the load of beans that we need to sell. Because we definitely don't want to miss out on that. And we do have $10 beans right now. Uh, which is pretty good with the current geo prices. Looks like we've got short season soybeans to sell. I forgot that we did all short season beans last year, so let's take a look at the prices for the short season soybeans. Short season soybeans not selling quite as well as regular soybeans, but they are buying them at the biodiesel plant, which is the one sell point on this map that we haven't been to yet. And so I'm excited to go check that out. And it looks like we don't even have a full hopper full of uh, beans. We're out of short so season soybeans. So it's good that we're going to go ahead and sell this real quick. And then I'm just going to double check. We don't have any soybeans either. We've got just a smidge of dry corn. So with that, we're going to run this half load of beans up to the elevator here. And see what kind of money we're going to get for this. I'm really curious to check out this biodiesel plant. We haven't been up there on this map yet. And so I'm kind of looking forward to seeing how the uh, pull throughs are, how it's laid out inside, etc. We've only driven by it on the road and I've admittedly not really paid it that much attention. Usually expect something like this to pretty much only be buying corn. Uh, you can see the big piles of corn here on the outside, but it is what it is. It is a sell point here and it is accepting uh, soybeans from us. So we're going to go ahead and just accept it and see how it works. We're going to pull into this driveway, I think. And if we continue around this way, it looks like we pull into this building here and we should be able to dump our beans. We open up our tarp here, get in the front hopper, 
and dump the beans. I'm curious to see what a not even half load of beans is going to sell for. Looks like we're making a few dollars, which is good. Come in at $7,500 for that half load of beans, so not too shabby. I'll be curious to see how next harvest goes. Uh, we are doing a ton of beans this year. We've got two of our biggest fields growing beans, and we're going to be doing short season beans in uh, one of our smaller fields. So three out of five fields growing beans of some kind uh, this year. And so with that, we've got uh, almost $1,200 in the wallet again. We'll probably pay another $10,000 down on the loan here just to make sure that we're keeping an eye on that. I want to continue to pay down that loan as much as we're able um, day to day. Otherwise, we're going to be paying a ton of interest as we progress through the seasons here. In fact, if we pull up the financial tab here, uh, you can see that in the previous days we've been paying 1986 We paid down a little bit of the loan here uh, with the money we made from contracts. Uh, but this is a lot of money to be paying out each day in seasons, especially given that we have six day seasons. That's 24 days uh, in a year, quote unquote. And I think we're gonna actually leave this semi right here for a second. Since we are gonna have a full load of wheat here, we might as well open up the semi and get this wheat dumped out, empty the combine while we're here, and then we can shift gears and go do that spraying contract. We're a little all over the place today. There's just so many things to do, and we want to get them all done. I definitely like when there's lots of jobs to do, lots of things to move between, uh, rather than sometimes of the year, especially playing with seasons. It feels like you're just sitting around waiting for crops to grow. Uh, it's not my favorite part of the game. I like having stuff to do all the time, and so being able to have the winter wheat come in and then plant some short season soybeans. It really gives us that extra boost of something to do here in the middle of the summer, as opposed to in a normal game, I'd be sitting here just advancing time into our next season. So with that uh, emptied out, we're gonna run down here to the end of the field and unload this combine one more time. I think if we can unload him on the way back down here, he will have enough capacity in the hopper to finish up this field. So we're getting a decent amount of wheat here. However, we're not gonna have a full semi-load even, which is uh, probably a good thing from an efficiency perspective. I'll only have to make one trip up to the elevator when the wheat is at a good point to sell. I'm kind of curious, let's hop into the seasons menu here. And it looks like wheat is another crop that's gonna sell well in the winter alongside our corn. And so it'll be a little while before we have to worry about selling off all of this wheat. I think wheat generally stores pretty good though. So I don't think we'll have too many problems with that. And it looks like the combine is empty. So we're gonna go ahead and run this uh, load up to the semi. And at this point, since there's only a couple of rounds left, I think our big ambitious plans of multitasking into some spraying are going to get delayed until we just finish up this job so that we can switch the semi back over to the spray trailer. Surprisingly, we were able to fit all of that wheat in the front hopper again. I'm not even sure we'll get into the back hopper. Maybe we will. There's still a, couple, a full round here left on the field. Uh, I don't think we're actually going to need the grain cart to unload the combine again. I think he's gonna have the capacity for everything in there himself. So let's bring this back up to the farm. We're gonna give it a quick wash and put it back into the shed for the time being. Keep our yard all tidied up and let us be ready to jump into the next job rather than having equipment spread out all over the farm like we usually do. There we go, all spick and span. Let's get this into, I think, one of these garage stalls over here. We've got the sprayer in the first stall, so we'll go ahead and pull the grain cart right in here to our second stall. 
I think ideally I'd actually uh, set these up facing the other way, but this is just how I happen to pull in to our farm on a regular basis. All right, with everything all put away here, let's run out here and jump into our combine for the final pass here. And then we'll get this unloaded into the trucks. Now the real question is, will this last pass be too wide for the header? We're not sure. It looks a little wide to me here, but we'll see what it looks like once I get turned around. It is a little wide. So we'll have to make another round to pick up a few feet here, it looks like. So we're not going to mess around too much here with trying to get it perfect. We'll go ahead and give ourselves a foot or two of space here. Get our GPS going again and uh, jump in cab here. Uh, aside from the fact that we've got so many warning lights that are actually on, uh, I do like the look of the interior on this combine. I think it's pretty well done. All of the gauges and stuff work, and we've also got the fill meter for the back hopper there. So you can see uh, on this set of gauges on the uh, side panel here, uh, the third one from the top is filling up with our leaders in the back hopper here. Not something that the community extension mod is overriding for bushels but if we look down here even though it says kilometers per hour that's actually been converted to miles per hour for uh, the speed which is pretty cool i do love the community extensions mod uh, does a great job of giving me my u.s style measurements everywhere in the game that i'd want to see them just about it does feel like the uh, camera in the cab here has a unique field of view. It's not necessarily respecting the settings that I have set in the game. I'm not sure. It just feels very narrow that I can't see more of my head when I'm in the camera. But all things considered, it's a decent view for sure. So let's get spun around here, see if we can put ourselves back in the row while in cab and get going down this final pass of the field. We'll put our snout a uh, half foot or so into the grass here to make sure we're not missing any areas and get that GPS going just to help us out a little bit more. Our windows are starting to get a bit dirty on this tractor. We have been harvesting for a little while here yet today, so totally understandable. We need to get some window cleaner in here though. We'll take this thing up to the yard and give it a wash after we finish up this field. It uh, is definitely starting to get a little dirty. And just like that, we've got our wheat field completely harvested here. I do see one little bit of wheat over here that we must have missed when turning around earlier. We're totally going to grab this because we're right here. And there we go. So we're just going to head down here dump all of this into our semi and we'll be done with the wheat we'll have to get the planter all set up and out here at some point soon and get our short season soybeans in before the end of the day but that should be a pretty quick job i'm thinking however we do have our tractor still set up on the grain cart and since we've brought ourselves down to just one regular tractor on the farm here we will need to switch that out and get it set up for planting here it's looking like we're going to get most of this wheat in the front hopper but a little bit of this is going to have to go in the back realistically i probably should have just put it all in the back rather than having so much weight in just half of the trailer could have spread it out just a little bit better but since we're not going to have to take this thing on the road it's really not going to matter as we just drive across the farmyard here i don't think I'll be curious to see what our total bushels are here on the wheat. Let's get this combine out of the trees. We're going to set this thing down by the pressure washer here. We'll need to get this all cleaned up before we put it back in the shed. Uh, but I don't want to block the semi from being able to get through and dump the wheat into our silos. So we're going to try and put this right here. I think it'll be close enough to the pressure washer to allow us to get everything cleaned up here. 
while leaving enough room for our semi to sneak behind us here. We jump back into the semi here. We ended up with 956 bushels of wheat, which is not too bad. Uh, I was probably hoping for just a little bit more, but I think the yield was pretty good, and that is a pretty small field if I'm being honest. So let's go ahead and get it all dumped into our bins here. And with everything all emptied out here, I think we are gonna tarp this up even though it's below the cover and just drop this trailer right here. We'll leave it under the cover, give it a little extra protection from the weather for the time being. Ideally, I guess I could store that in the shed rather than uh, under there. But since we only have the one trailer, it's a good enough spot for me right now. And let's go ahead and take this thing over and get it set up on the sprayer. All right, we've got the sprayer all hooked back up here. However, I think this is probably a good spot to wrap up today's episode. Hopefully you've enjoyed the episode. If you have, drop a like. If you're new to the channel, subscribe for daily farm sim content. That's all for today. Ketterk out. Since we have two of our bigger fields uh, growing beans. Ah, uh, stupid fence. Let's get over here. Oh, we bumped some branches.